there is currently an effort underway by the town of Westford to revitalize the property at 35 Town Farm Road. This community preservation project would see the property developed into elderly housing, would allow for a new space to be provided for the Westford Food Pantry, and give the fire department the chance to build a new, state-of-the-art fire training facility. But to understand the importance of this project, one must first understand the history of Westford's town farm. After you have been pleading and begging and whining for the latest and greatest toy on the store shelf, did your parents ever say to you, dear child, you'll put us in the poorhouse? And that term, the poorhouse, probably didn't mean a thing to you. In 1824, the town of Westford paid John and Sally Reed $2,500 for their 170-acre farm on the west side of the town, on which to build a town farm. What a fortuitous purchase that was, as today the water tower on Kissacook Hill, the land where the day school, the Blanchard Middle School, and the George Rogers Fire Station, as well as the town farm buildings, were all built on that 170 acres. In 1873, the town replaced the Reed Farmhouse with the brick building that now forms much of the structure at 35 Town Farm Road. The purpose of the town farm, or poorhouse, was to provide a home for those in need. Typically, those that served were elderly, widows or widowers who had no family members left to care for them. Amazingly, some of those very early residents were veterans of the Revolutionary War. The length of stay for the residents varied widely. Sometimes folks stayed for years or until death took them. Sometimes their stays were brief. Perhaps a fire had wiped out their own home and they needed a temporary place to stay. Others provided for were called the outside poor. These folks remained in their homes but just needed assistance with firewood or food. Potatoes were frequently brought to their homes, probably grown right here on the poor farm. And yet another group just stayed during the worst months of the winter and then returned to their own home as the weather moderated. But whatever the situation, they were provided a place to stay at the town farm. And those residents who could were expected to work and pitch in with farm chores and inside chores, as this was a working farm, an almost self-sustaining community. Though its name changed over the years, the town farm continued to serve Westford's neediest residents until the mid-20th century. While many towns in Massachusetts closed their town farms by the 1940s, Westford kept its town farm operational as a town infirmary until 1959, when the last patient was transferred to Dukesbury State Hospital. In 1970, the school department moved its administration offices into the building. Later, the Parks and Recreation Department used the space. And in 2008, the building was placed on the National Register of Historic Places as one of the few remaining town-owned poor farms in the state. But all too soon, the buildings were vacant and demolition threatened. Westford has an enviable and long-standing record of preserving and reusing many of its historic buildings. The original Westford Academy is now the Westford Museum. The second Westford Academy, the Rodenbush Community Center. The Parkerville School now provides historical experiences for students. The Frost School and the Old Nabnasset School are child care centers. The Sargent School in Grandeville, which is currently being used for low-income seniors and special needs housing. And the Cameron School, which is now the Cameron Senior Center. And although the Old Town Farm from 1837 will soon be sold to provide much needed affordable housing for our seniors and a home for the food pantry for community members that need that help, the town farm is returning to its original purpose, to provide care and support to those in Westford who need it most. After the town farm closed, Westford's own Mickey Crocker started an effort to feed the hungry of Westford. I'm Mickey Crocker, born and brought up in Forge Village. Um, and I started working with community teamwork back in 1967 and in my office when the um, as a veterans agent at that time when families would come in we could give them a food voucher but they had to go to Tewksbury back then for market basket so we decided to empty out my filing cabinet and keep only dry goods cereals and packaged stuff so when families came in we would give them a basket of food from that, 
the welfare office moved from the town hall, moved to Lowell. So I inherited all the welfare people in Westford. We took care of a, a lot of people who, especially the elderly and people with a lot of kids. And we started doing the food baskets. Um, I think we started out, we probably had 35 people and then they do hundreds of baskets now. That's the way we started and, and when I see what they're doing today, I am amazed. And again, I might have started it like I start other things, but other people pick it up and, and they have made it what it is today. I think as Veterans Agent, it was one of the most rewarding jobs I've had for the town. As needs within the town have grown, the Westford Food Pantry has outgrown its current residents. I'm Ken Heil, Vice President of the Food Pantry. I've been involved in the pantry since uh, about 2012, and it's one of the joys of my life to be able to volunteer here and help the many people in town and surrounding communities that need help. Um, a well, brief history on the pantry. It started here about 50 years ago when Helena, known as Mickey Crocker, was working over in Town Hall. And she knew of a couple of veterans that were sort of down on their luck. So she started to gather food for them. And she told me after a while the desk drawers filled up, file cabinets filled up, closets filled up. So she was also active at the senior center and came over here and asked the people if she could put the food here so the veterans would have an access to it. And that's where it started. Um, we are one of the many food pantries in the area, all the towns around do have pantries. Uh, we have the smallest, literally, store space of any pantry in the area. But we like to think of ourselves as the little engine that could, because while we're the smallest, we have the most variety of product that we, any other store offers. We do all of the canned goods, we do frozen food, uh, refrigerated food, eggs, cheese, butter, milk, canned goods, all types. But we also do personal care, which a lot of pantries do not do. Uh, we do personal care, we do household cleaning products, and we also, from time to time, have special orders for people that are in need. If they have a young baby, and they need a special size diaper, we'll go out and get that diaper for those people. As you see, as you look around the pantry, we've got a lot of canned goods, uh, pastas, uh, spam, those types of things. Other pantries don't, don't offer it as we do. Uh, but we don't offer a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. We just don't have the physical spot to do it. The other pantries do do that. Uh, fortunately, they have the space and they can accommodate that. We're hoping when we move into the new town farm area, we're going to be able to, to provide fresh fruits and vegetables every day as a supplement to their diets. What you saw earlier was our store upstairs, and that's where we bring the food. Uh, all food that's donated is brought to the basement of the building and it takes us 19 steps and 25 paces to get to the store to load the shelves. Uh, we're anxious to get into the new building where everything will be located on one floor. And we won't have to do that. But down here you'll see the, st the shelves are well stocked because of the very, very generous contributions of the many, many people in this community that have taken really to heart the COVID and the virus situation. Um, again, we have three or four people that work down here about six hours a week just to maintain the basement stock and the inventory that we have and keep the stuff in, in order. So let's take a peek at what 35 Town Farm Road has to offer to the Westford Food Pantry. Hi, my name is Tim Baker and I'm president of the Westford Food Pantry. I've been a volunteer at the pantry over the past four years and have been a resident of Westford for the past 25 years. Come take a tour with me to our proposed new home at 35 Town Farm Road. Clients will arrive via a new rebuilt ramp that will allow access to people of all levels of mobility. Upon entering the building, they will turn left to check into an administrative area where they will register and receive a shopping cart. Moving across the hall, they will begin their shopping experience as the room in front of them will have the shelves of food currently housed at the Cameron Center. Moving into the next room, Clients will be presented with a new freezer and refrigerator and have the opportunity to choose fresh fruits and vegetables. The third room will have a commercial refrigerator and freezer, allowing for the distribution of meats, dairy, and frozen foods. A corridor provides staff access to the rear of the building, 
where a walk-in cooler and more commercial refrigeration will be located. The rear entry door will be replaced with a loading dock, eliminating the need to move our food up and down the stairs like we currently do. The hallway that shows the original brick facade of the historic building has three storage rooms adjacent to it, which will house the warehouse of products now stored in the Cameron Senior Center basement. Not only will this provide a one-level shopping experience, but the pantry will also serve as a living museum with historic elements, hardware, hinges, and photos being preserved, showing Westford's dedication to the preservation of its historic mission and the historic building. Join us there. Just as the original town farm met not only the needs of the hungry, but also those who needed housing, the current proposal will bring much needed housing to Westford's senior population. Hello, my name is Lisa Larrabee. I'm the Executive Director of the Westford Housing Authority, and I'm here to talk about Town Farm and the need for more low-income and affordable housing for our seniors in Westford. Um, as you may know, there are a lot of people that are aging in their homes now in Westford that cannot afford to stay in their homes and housing projects like Town Farm Road and Mickey's Place are a way to be able to house these people who have lived most of their adult lives in this beautiful town and who would love to stay here. So right now we know that we have 78 elderly applicants that are Westford residents that require low income or affordable housing and we don't have anywhere to place those people. Those 78 will likely wait between five to 10 years to be housed here at the Westford Housing Authority because we, our inventory is so low, we only have 75 units of elderly housing here. The wait times are very long. Once people get into elderly housing, they most likely do not move out unless they have to go to an assisted living or to a nursing home or unfortunately they pass away. In Westford we currently have 19 handicapped individuals so those would be people that are under 60 years of age that need low-income housing and unfortunately for those handicapped individuals they're going to wait 10 years or longer to get housing here. At the Westford Housing Authority, we house people who are at 80% or below the area median income, and so that's considered low income. So one person moving into state-aided public housing, such as what the Westford Housing Authority has, cannot make more than $55,950, and two people cannot make more than $63,950. Now these numbers that I gave you, it doesn't mean that they meet, need to make that much money. It means they can't make more than that money. So most people that are living in low income housing are making quite a bit less than that money. I always invite people if they do have any questions about low income or affordable housing in Westford to please feel free to reach out to me as I'm willing to talk to anybody about the, these issues that we have. So I am Nancy Cook and I am the chair of the Council on Aging and we are so happy that this project is moving forward to give us 35 units of affordable senior housing. While some seniors in Westford are very fortunate to be able to afford high-end assisted living to fit their final years, we're hoping here to create a home for low and moderate income people to age in place make new friends and enjoy their life with services when they need them. The food pantry will be here. We're giving them dignity and a place to call home and we couldn't be happier. So how did this project come to be? Here's 35 Town Farm Road Task Force Chairperson, Ellen Hardy, being interviewed by Westford Cats News Director, Joyce Polino Crane. So the selectmen, uh, through Eric Heidemann, the assistant town manager, put out a request for proposal, and those were due back just before Christmas of 2020. And we had only one respondent, but it was the person we'd hoped would respond. Mm -hmm. David Hedison, who has been the long-term executive director of the Chelmsford Housing Authority. And uh, he's done a lot of good in this world. 
Yeah. And in this town, there are developments already. The newer facility mm -hmm. at 65 Tadmuck Road, 67, that was David's creation through choice. Um, the veterans housing, uh, mm -hmm. what the old Terra Hall at the intersection of 25 and 27, that was David's doing. And if you were at town meeting in 2020, um, he came to the town to ask for community preservation money to do the Helena Crocker housing, which will be on Littleton Road, sort of catty corner to the Tadmuck Road property. And um, then he has uh, his irons in the fire for yet another a smaller um, operation on Carlisle Road. Oh. So when it comes to affordable housing in Westford, um, mm -hmm. David has been the town's closest ally and help. And we're just thrilled that Town Farm Road will be added to that list of his accomplishments. So um, this will eventually go to the town election. Not eventually, it'll probably go. No, it won't ever, no, it will never come to a ballot. Uh, Joyce, the, the town meeting decides the allocation of community preservation money. Oh, that's right. And the, the authority for the selectmen to sell the property came from town meeting many years ago. Mm -hmm. That's why they put out their request for proposal in 2017. So town meeting has already made the decision and given the authority of the selectmen to sell it. So it does not have to go back to a ballot and the sale does not have to go back to town meeting either. Um, this is a place where there will be money coming into the town. We will receive $580,000 from choice and that will help to offset the cost of um, the new fire training facility. So there will be, um, it won't be a zero net. There will be additional funds, but um, that will certainly go a long way to paying that bill. So we really are pleased that so many town boards and committees have worked so closely with us to make this look like it's gonna be a win for housing, a win for historical preservation, a win for the fire department. Um, we hope a win for the water department to have the, the training facility on their land. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been one of the funnest, most positive committees I've ever worked on and I've been on a few. So what might a revitalized 35 Town Farm Road look like? These architect drawings reveal the vision that developer David Hedison of Choice Inc. plans to make a reality in Westford. Not only will they provide housing, an area for the food pantry, but also community preservation and a revitalization of this area.